Um, my name is Pavel and I do not mind me being interrupted, so please raise your hands if you have something to say. Um, so yeah, I'm working at Facebook, have been contributing to IUMI for a long enough time and uh, today I want to talk a little bit about uh, our work in progress work on bringing BPAF to have fully internal control of uh, IO using IOU ring. So, I believe there, there was enough of different articles and talks about IO ring, so I will just briefly outline the idea and that's it. Um, IO ring is a communication channel and new API uh, which, uh, which brings a, services a communication channel between the user space and the kernel space there are two sides so it, submission queue and completion queue the user space or just users first fill one or more entries into the submission queue where each entry represents some operation like a read or write previously with synchronous uh, operation so they uh, the synchronous syscalls it would be like just a normal syscall now it is entries in the submission Q1. Then when it's ready, it does a system call to actually submit all the IO to, to the kernel and then kernel do all the job and submitting requests. When a request completes, it posts an event into the completion queue where the user space can grab them from and there is all the needed different API like waiting on completion queue and so on. There's also a, a skip all mode, which I have to mention. Uh, it's where you have a kernel thread which actively pulls the submission queue. And so in this mode, uh, the user space usually doesn't even need to do any syscall. The kernel thread will just find it and submit on behalf of the user space. Yeah, we've got a lot of different request types from basic read and write from the beginning to a lot, of, a bunch of different network operations, uh, polling, splicing, brand new, just recently merged file system operation as the list still grows. Um, and we also got a lot of different features already mentioned SQ poll. Oops. Okay, already mentioned SQ poll, IO poll for QLS, uh, IO, different register resources, we can register files and buffers, cut some overhead on different ref counting, like file ref counting or different internal accounting allocation and so on. We've got a notion of links, uh, which allows to just link a couple of requests together so they execute in an order and by default uh, there is no ordering in IO ring for the submitted operations. There is different optimization for execution flow like internal polling and so on and so forth. And I want to give a little bit of an idea how we execute our requests. Um, Ha, huh. okay, it looks like the slides are a bit outdated and so I uploaded them like two hours ago. Anyway, so how do we execute our requests? Uh, we usually first try to execute them in some no wait mode. Uh, and so they, they can just complete because there is already data for whatever reason it is or can go as sync with as it would be the case with, uh, for example, direct block IO. If it doesn't work, we will try our best to find some asynchronous mean to execute the request. For example, for, for buffer trees that miss the cache, we can wait on a page or for pullable files like sockets, we can try to hide try to execute polling internally and try again when uh, the poll fires. So it's kind of hidden inside IO during EPO looping, but a bit different. But 
if nothing else works, we would f fall back to a chat pool. It is usually slower than any other asynchronous mean, but uh, often necessary. But for all hot paths, we try our best to avoid it. So, and because from time to time we see some people having some strange ideas and being absolutely sure on them, I was thinking it would be nice to leave the slide for the reference. Uh, the first misconception is quite popular, I would say, for some reason. Uh, I have to say it out loud. Are you hearing it's not just a working pool? As I said before, work working thread is a slower path and we wouldn't have got such a performance with just working pool. Uh, the second was, one is that Ayurian is not a your completion port. Not even going to elaborate on that, but just to think about a funny, a funny fact that Microsoft now tries to bring an Ayurian for Windows. Definitely will be interesting to see where it goes. And at last, it's not only about syscall elimination, reducing the number of syscalls. The, the greatest benefit in the, is the API itself, providing uniform way of asynchronous, doing asynchronous I.O. You and also providing so many optimizations that haven't been available before. Okay, going back to the, to the main topic. Our problem is that uh, the hardware vulnerabilities hit us hard and uh, all the mitigation made it made syscalls pretty expensive and even though we have some syscall patching in IOUing it still takes some time for doing syscalls and to give an idea if you have some tight loop with syscalls inside doing not much work. For example, for this one, I've been doing like four kilobyte uh, uh, copy. As uh, the syscall overhead was taking for me more than 50% of CPU time. And, but for more or less newer and better CPU, I would expect it to be like maybe 20-ish, 30-ish percent, something still not a lot. And uh, for the next case, I was using a standard uh, IOU benchmark. Uh, in this instance, it was doing no op operations, but with batching 32, and that means that we have just one syscall per every 32 operations. And it was taking like a quarter of CPU. And with something more realistic, like, uh, are you against a block device, no block device in this case, with some somewhat more realistic batching with four requests at a time? It was more than 15% for me, which is still a lot. And this day, test was just doing like 1.6 million IOPS per second. And if you have been following Gensel's updates on so your urine, he gets like 3.5 and more million IOPS per core with a single open drive. So it's not so unrealistic case. I mentioned SQ poll before, and one may ask why not to use S why do not use a skip poll to just eliminate all the syscalls. But it's not really the ultimate solution because we have some problems with a skip poll. Uh, the first one, it requires a separate core, otherwise it is kind of useless probably. And it gets a lot of, uh, takes a lot of CPU, CPU cycles you can get cache bonds and, and you still need the user space to process your SQs and it would probably need to wait for for completion. So it's kind of, might depends on your workload, but it may be still be a syscall for waiting. 
And so following the whole idea of throwing BPF at every problem we have, let's try out BPF here as well. Okay, there are some requirements we put up. Uh, the first one would be flexibility because uh, basically the user should be able to to program anything they wish with it. And if there are too much restrictions, uh, it would be just useless piece of junk, yet another one. So the first one, uh, BPF should be able to submit new requests, that's obvious one. And as it submits new requests, we should also be able to access uh, the results of them. Having some kind of feedback More to that, uh, we may want to access multiple completions at single BPF run. Another criteria would be to uh, be able to analyze and access uh, use normal user space memory. Of course, there are always some BPFs, uh, BPFs way of doing it, like maybe using BPF maps bpf arrays but it can be it can be a problem in for adoption especially if uh, the, the application have never used bpf before and the other criteria would be it should be of low overhead otherwise the user can just go to the user space and that's it So the first idea of using it, a dump idea is to add a callback for each SQE and run it for each request and run it on completion. And fairly enough, it, it could be of benefit for some cases, but I see just more problems to it. First of all, it adds some overhead in the generic non-BPF pass. Uh, not only that, but what also prevents some further optimizations and that's a big no. Um, and also we should be able to finally control the, the context from which we execute it because the, because it shouldn't be run from RQ. We may need to avoid uh, recursion and all the stuff. Um, and this code just looks horrible. Yeah. The way it's solved is just uh, creating a new ring type of requests, BPF request, which basically solves all the problem I mentioned and uh, nicely give a give us a way to use all the Ayurian internal infrastructure, all the batching, batching all the optimizations inside. Um, there are also a bunch of nice wins like being able to wait and so on. Uh, the only downside to it is that it may require, it's not free. It adds some overhead, but uh, we can work with it and more about it a bit later. The so next problem was to get completion into BPF program. So we could have used linking the first idea that came to mind, but it has never been considered uh, seriously because it is by design pretty limited. So the idea is that we can use links and we can pass SQ of the previous request to our BPF program. But as I said, uh, first it by design binds it to linking, which is already pretty restrictive and also the, there will be a problem to passing multiple securities and that's a bummer. Um, the way we 
the did go is by creating multiple completion queues and each uh, each request just specified submission times to which completion queues the completion should go and obviously ppf uh, will be is able to uh, get events from completion from any completion queue post new events and so on it also gave us one nice way of new synchronization like posting to another completion queue um, and for example what i had in mind of using it for example you have some bunch of work and let's say a piece of work and uh, you create a bpf request you allocate a completion queue gives this completion queue in use to this bpf request so the, the only one using this completion queue is that bpf request you run this bpf it keeps itself alive uh, working on the problem and when it's done if ever uh, it just posts a new completion or using any other way of notification to the user space that it's done with the work um, the last one was about accessing the user space memory and it is actually already solved by BPF. Uh, they introduced not so long ago sleepable BPF programs and that solved a lot of problems. And that's a big deal for uh, you in BPF as well because uh, submission may want to wait. So it's a, quite a hard requirement for us. So about the overhead some may want to the first thing some may want to use a lot of bpf requests and it costs some time because some may link additional bpf requests per each normal bpf request basically doubling the number of requests um as you may guess it would cost just something and the other problem is that we usually were optimizing it for batched submissions because there is a system call constant uh, overhead. So submitting just by one request doesn't make too much sense for a year from the performance perspective. Uh, and but good news, we did a lot of work on that front past year. We cut a lot of just overhead a number of instructions for submitting requests we amortized the some parts of uh, per, per submission overhead so for bpf it is pretty much free we did a lot of different optimizations like request caching and other kind of batching completion batching all the stuff so it's not really too much of overhead for creating a, an empty request especially comparing to overhead we have down the step for example for doing actual io so a little bit about the api first of all uh, you create your bpf programs it's not as interesting here as BPF uh, specific, then you register your BPF request in IO Uring. You can unregister them as well. Um, there was proposal to, to have not registered BPF request, so it may see the light at some point. And this slide would be just an optional optimization next to submit a bpf request you as usually just uh, fill in an, an sd entry submission queue entry you specify the op code to be bpf and you set the program index 
which was registered before and that's it. From the BPF point of view, first of all, just a reminder that BPF programs take a context argument, which you see as the struct in the middle of the slide. And the BPF request usually can return can return some return code. So if it specifies uh, return zero, it just instructs that you're going to complete the request, the BPF request. Uh, if it returns wait, it, prior to that, it should fill into entries in BPF context uh, to specify for which completion queue it should wait and for, for how much request it should wait for. This is also user data data in BPF context. It's basically the user data you specified when you submitted the BPF requests. And if it just treat it, uh, provide some con additional way to provide some context to BPF programs. And at the bottom, there are basic BPF helpers to submit, to submit new requests, emit and grab CQS from completion queues. Pretty basic and all as I described before. Um, here is a lead BPF example with maybe useless, but uh, but showing all, all the API, which I described before, getting getting new events, uh, submitting new requests, reading user space memory, waiting for, for completion queue. And there are some, some further ideas what we may have what we may want and it may see the light at some point depends on where it goes but if you have some ideas we will be it would be welcome we would love to hear it so going to the numbers um there was a group of uh, german researchers uh, who were willing to try out the, the project. And so because of them, they proposed one test case, which I've been describing here. Uh, it is a, a, a big file copy uh, with buffer trees and the file is fully cached. So maybe nothing interesting, but it kind of gives an idea about overheads and what we can get. Um, as you see, if you take a look at the first table, you can uh, compare the, the first line and the third one. Uh, with mitigation enable on one setup, we've got like 40% win for BPF or something like that. Um, but uh, when we disable uh, mitigations, uh, a user in BPF pretty much loses to the synchronous ver version, which is, which is pretty much ex expected. And that's great to, to get such a, a performance win with, uh, with mitigations enabled, but it highly depends on the CPU. So we tried out another one and, uh, for another CPU, the difference is not as great as it was for the first tests. You can see in the second table that the difference is not as big as before. So it will be highly dependent on mitigations you enable and on the actual CPU you use. Um, it might be not so interesting examples, but that's the one I put here. And other cases are still in development, 
because each of them requires some optimization and some thinking of it. Um, so it, it's left for further updates. Um, huh. Excuse me. There is some parts missing in the slides. So we'll ju just talk through it. I, I have to note that I do not expect it to be pretty much useful for, for applications which natu naturally have uh, a good batching rates and do not care much about latency, but it's not always the case uh, because first of all, batching usually hurts latency and the other one is that um, it's not always possible. For example, with sockets, TCP sockets, you would need to serialize it somehow at the end because of ordering concerns. Um, and excuse me, give me a second. Yep, uh, there is there's a lot of different ideas. I would love to try it out for like for caching system databases, as uh, for broadcasting collect. Some people mentioned before quick using that it can benefit uh, by using it in quick protocol. Um, and there is some move on on those fronts. Uh, Did I lose that? Just trying to switch you over to the latest version of your slides. Oh. Okay. Can I get to the previous one? Perfect. Is that the one? Yeah. So there are some cases we would love to try more realistic one that would benefit in the real world, but uh, and there are some motion on that front, but uh, it is not quite still there. It would be also interesting to see if it would be of use to fuse file, uh, file system. Uh, but if you have some more ideas, again, we would just love to hear them. Uh, next steps would be to explore new test cases and do optimizations and each new test case usually brings some ways to us to optimize a thing and it works to do it because it usually benefits uh, normal IO ring, non PPF IO ring as well. So it's a good exercise for us. Um, yeah, and there are some backlog left, uh, some stuff on PPF side, and some slight regressions for because of multi secure, which I need to solve first. And that's it. There is some resources if you would love to go through uh, the BPF stuff with uh, liburing and examples and just our are you doing mailing list guides and uh, manuals. That's great. Thank you, Pavel. Um, so does anybody have questions? Uh, raise your hand or turn your microphone on and or just speak up or ask in the chat and we can relay. Uh, 